Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, I welcome Mr. Yavuz Terim Kran, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkey, uh, and Tamim Asay, former Vice Minister of Defense uh, and founder of uh, and CEO of the Institute of War and Peace Studies in Afghanistan, and distinguished participants from Afghanistan and Turkey. As SETA Foundation, we are delighted to host this meaningful event. Uh, so today as SETA, uh, we are organizing uh, a webinar uh, on Turkey-Afghanistan relations after a century. Uh, you know, most of the people know that uh, the two countries have uh, friendly relations from the beginning. Afghanistan is the second country uh, who recognized uh, the Turkish Grand National Assembly uh, that is before even the declaration of the Republican regime in Turkey after signing the Turkey-Afghanistan Alliance Agreement Afghanistan uh, had recognized Turkey that is the, the very first Turkish government on March 1st in 1921 uh, and uh, Turkish embassy in Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, was the first diplomatic mission uh, for the state. So they have a kind of unique, special relationship. We are really uh, glad to have this event today. Today, we have two keynote speeches, one by Professor Burhanettin Duran, General Coordinator of SETA Foundation, and one by Yavuz Selim Kran, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkey. Then it will be followed by a panel uh, with four distinguished speakers, two from Afghanistan and two from Turkey. Now I want to give the floor to Professor Burhanettin Duran for his keynote speech. The floor is yours, Professor Duran. Thank you, Professor Ataman. Um, His Excellency, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Kran. Uh, distinguished guests and speakers from Turkey and Afghanistan and respective audience who are currently following us through social media. March 1st is a prominent day for the faith of both Afghanistan and Turkey. If you go through the history books a century ago, how Turkish and Afghan delegations in Moscow had met each other in a lobby of hotel, you would be surprised to what extent a kinship charmed each other. Both delegations were there to search for a recognition to be a part of international communities, fully independent states. They inspired each other and agreed to sign an agreement of friendship and cooperation just a hundred years ago from today. There is another interesting story which must be underlined now. There were three Turkish prisoners of war who had managed to flee their camps in Siberia. After a long journey, they reached Kabul exhausted from hunger and walking such a long distance. They were three Ottoman officers who had a chance to meet Imanullah Han in Kabul. Han was sympathetic to Turkish cause in both World War I and Turkish Independence War. And he drafted a letter directly to Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. The letter reached to Ankara after the signature of Moscow agreement of both countries because it took months to reach Anatolia. Emanullah Han requested cooperation and support from Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. And of course, uh, the, the response was positive. After these two events, Turkey sent officers, teachers, doctors, and to Kabul, although Turkish government was dealing with Sakarya war against the Allied powers. And right after these two incidents that I mentioned, both countries had a hard given long lasting and eternal brotherhood. Turkey has always felt herself responsible and committed to give a hand to Afghan people. Afghan people, on the other hand, were committed to stand with Turkish friends in military, social, political, cultural dimensions of mutual relations. For instance, we cannot forget Afghans who fought against allied powers in the World War I, and also we have murdered Afghan individuals who dedicated their lives in, the, in Turkish independence wars. It is the same with the Turkish with the souls of Turkish soldiers who dedicated their lives in Afghanistan. The, these were the bridge of our solidarity and dedication together as Turkey and Afghanistan. 
Actually, another point shows the similarities between both countries that we have shared social and cultural features. Our philosophy leans on Mevlana and our sense of humor shares Nasreddin Hoca. We think and smile with the teaching and stories of these two legendary personalities. When it comes to diplomacy and political relations, it commenced on March 1st, a hundred years ago. Thus, Afghanistan has become the second country recognizing the Turkish Grand National Assembly of then that was struggling for countering the aggressive invasions of the Allied powers. Meanwhile, Turkish Embassy in Kabul was the first diplomatic mission inaugurated in Kabul. Turkey and Afghanistan are still in an effort to preserve this heart-given relation while looking forward to deepening the mutual companion of good faith. I know that Turkey supported Afghanistan in many ways, not just in official terms, but also in human-to-human -human connections. We have many things to come on, uh, and share. Turkey and Afghanistan's missions also assume the responsibility to assist our Afghan brothers and sisters in maintaining security, reconstruction and restoration efforts, and even developing education and healthcare units. This distinguished friendship extracted from history, kinship, brotherhood, promoted the relations through the following decades. But I think we have to more uh, to develop new levels of mutual understandings and cooperation areas through regional or international mechanisms to provide and sustain war ravaged Afghanistan's long term security, prosperity and stability. I know that Afghanistan is experiencing a long uh, transition process, and we hope that there will be a stable democratic uh, Afghanistan in the future and prosperity will be with the Afghan peoples. I hope this panel will display the existing level of relations and discuss both how countries would go further in terms of social and cultural base, politics, security, economics, and other fields as well. With my best wishes in mind, I'd like to thank you in advance for your cooperation for today's panel. And this aims to strengthen the Turkish-Afghan friendship and brotherhood. And thank you very much. Okay, uh, Professor Duran, thank you very much for your uh, insightful uh, keynote speech. Now I want to give the floor His Excellency, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkey, Mr. Yabus Telim Kran. The floor is yours, Mr. Kran. Thank you very much, Muhittin Hocam. Dear General Coordinator Muhittin Hocam, distinguished participants, it's a great pleasure for me to address this forum on the 100th anniversary of Turkey-Afghanistan diplomatic relations. Uh, I thank SETA Foundation and our Strategic Research Center for organizing this very timely and meaning meaningful event. And our ego, our Foreign Minister Melik Çavuşoğlu and Minister Atmar addressed the reception held in Kabul. Our minister also planted trees with Ambassador of Afghanistan, symbolizing our wish for a common future with Afghanistan. Before coming to the issues of our current cooperation, I want to touch upon the history of Turkey-Afghanistan relations. Yes, 1921 is the year that we formally established diplomatic relations, but Turkish-Afghan friendship goes well, well beyond 100 years. Even though there is 3,000 kilometers between our countries, our hearts always beat together. Turkey-Afghanistan relations are shaped by our common history and culture. As Burhan Ettin Hocam underlined, Mevlana Celaleddin Rumi is an important example of our common heritage. Eight centuries ago, he started his journey in Bel and lived, and lived most of his life in Konya. Even today, his message of peace, tolerance and divine now is reaching, reaching out different parts of the world. After the independence of Afghanistan, Turkey is the first country to open an embassy in Kabul. Our war hero, defender of Medine, Fahrettin Pasha was Turkey's first ambassador in Afghanistan. However, our diplomatic contacts go beyond 100 years as well. In 1877, Sultan Abdullah II sent a diplomatic mission to Shir Alihan to improve our cooperation. We always stand by each other in difficult times. Afghanistan recognized Turkish Grand National Assembly government during our war of independence. This gave strength and courage to our nation. We contributed to development efforts of our Afghan brothers and sisters in the first half of 20th century. Close relations between Mustafa Kemal Atatürk and Emanullah Han improved our cooperation. 
In 1920, Cemal Paşa established a modern army unit in Afghanistan named Kıtay-i Numune. We sponsored the first administrative school in Afghanistan. Our cooperation in medical training led the foundation of Kabul University. Dear friends, unfortunately, by the end of 1970s, Afghanistan started to suffer from instability and conflict. This has led to decades of violence and economic difficulties. Yet today, there are many reasons to be hopeful for the future of Afghanistan. Almost half of Afghan people is under the age of 18. As many young Afghans are studying in Turkey, we witness the strength and dynamism of the new generation. Their wish to build a better future for their country is giving us hope. Turkey is doing its share to support Afghanistan. Our development aid to Afghanistan amounts to $1.1 billion. This is our largest development assistance program abroad. Our support mostly focuses on education, health and infrastructure. So far, Turkey has carried out around 1,300 development assistance projects. We have built more than 100 schools in Afghanistan. Our Mari Foundation provided education to 6,000 students in 45 schools. More than 4,000 Afghan students benefit, benefited from Turkish scholarships. Education of women is important for the sustainable development of every country. Therefore, we supported projects on women's education. Turkish Afghan Women's University will contribute significantly to this, to this aid. We hope to complete this project soon. We provided health services for 9 million Afghan people so far. We are determined to advance our health cooperation, particularly during the time of COVID-19 pandemic. Maintaining peace and security in Afghanistan is another critical element of our cooperation. We are providing training and equipment support to Afghan security forces. Our troops within the NATO Resolve Support Mission contribute to the security of Afghanistan. There are some discussions within NATO about the future of this mission. However, Turkey will always stand by Afghanistan as long as our Afghan brothers and sisters demand. Distinguished participants, as Mohammed Iqbal said, Afghanistan is the heart of Asia. Central Asia and South Asia are connected through Afghanistan. Today, the country is at a critical crossroads. Intra-Afghan negotiations opened the window for peace. Achieving peace after 40 years of conflict requires hard work, regional and international support. Lasting peace is possible only if there is a prospect of sustainable economic development. That is why Turkey considers Afghanistan a valuable partner in trade and investments. We should achieve our trade value target of $500 million. We should use the potential offered by health, energy, mining, infrastructure and transport sectors. In this regard, we want to further our ongoing cooperation within the Lapis Lazuli Transit Trade and Transport Route. We also work together with Afghanistan to advance regional connectivity and trade in several multilateral mechanisms. The heart of Asia, Istanbul process is a good example. Turkey, Afghanistan, Pakistan and Turkey, Afghanistan, Iran trilateral mechanisms will not only contribute peace and stability, but also economic cooperation. We need a comprehensive, inclusive and result-oriented approach for peace, stability and prosperity. There is no military solution to the conflict in Afghanistan. Political, state, uh, political settlement is the only viable option. Regional, regional and international actors should also contribute to peace. However, participation of all parts of Afghan society in the peace process is the most important element. Dear friends, as our president Recep Tayyip Erdogan stated, we will continue our journey with the strength we gain from our bond, bond of brotherhood. Like in the past, Mevlana's wisdom guides us, to, guides us today. As Mevlana said, it is your road, your road alone. Others may walk with you, but no one can walk it, walk it with, uh, can, no one can walk it for you. Turkey is ready to walk with our Afghan brothers and sisters in their road to lasting peace. Your joy is our joy, your sorrow is our sorrow. We stand by each other when we are in need. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, His Excellency, Mr. Uh, Kran, for your uh, keynote speech. Uh, then, uh, now we want to start our panel. Uh, as I have said earlier, 
We have four uh, speakers, two from Afghanistan and two from Turkey. Each speaker will have 10 minutes for their presentations. Then at the end of the presentations, the audience will have the opportunity of submitting questions through social media platforms. Now I want to give the, fir uh, the first floor to Mr. Uh, Tamim Asayi, uh, who is the uh, former Deputy Minister of Defense of Afghanistan and currently founder and the CEO of the Institute of War and Peace Studies. He will draw a prospective perspective about the future of Turkey-Afghanistan relations. Uh, he claims that uh, the, the developing a new relation between the two countries is needed and he will uh, answer the question, what Turkey can do to help Afghanistan to overcome the challenges that it faces uh, nowadays and it will face in future. Now the floor is yours, uh, uh, Mr. Temi Matei. Bismillah rahman rahim um, <clears throat> uh, Excellency, Deputy Foreign Minister Kiran, um, General, Coordinator Duran, um, distinguished panelists, uh, thank you very much for having me here today. And it's an honor and pleasure to be speaking. Let me also take this opportunity as a former uh, Deputy Minister of Defense and former Deputy National Security Advisor for, uh, to acknowledge the sacrifices and the services of the Turkish military in Afghanistan. Uh, they are doing an incredible job as our Muslim brothers and sisters, and we would like to thank them for their services. And uh, I have had a, uh, an incredible relationship with them, and I've seen their services. So let me thank, um, uh, let me also take this opportunity to acknowledge their services and thank them for it uh, in Afghanistan. Um, I would also like to say that I will be focusing on the prospective uh, future bilateral relationship of the two countries. Um, we have a fabulous history, uh, as was uh, the highlights of which was uh, mentioned by uh, His Excellency the Deputy Foreign Minister, as well as by other speakers. Uh, but what I would like to do is focus uh, on how we can build on that very marvelous uh, and, and important history for, a, a, for an evolved uh, future uh, expanded bilateral relationship in the context of a new assertive uh, Turkish foreign policy, as well as Afghanistan's evolving situation and that what Turkey can do. I believe, and I'm a strong believer, that Afghanistan and uh, Turkey, while they have a, a very unique history together, uh, they can do more. There is more potential and this bilateral relationship, um, which is multifaceted, and we need to build on it. Turkey, uh, Turkey's role in Afghanistan has been expanding since their engagement. I mean, uh, the achievements were highlighted, um, whether it's on scholarships, whether it's in, on your aid assistance, 1.1 billion, and uh, as well as, you know, on our defense and security cooperation of uh, training thousands of Afghan officers in Turkish schools, as well as policemen and women. But I think uh, Turkey, uh, Turkish uh, and Afghan relationship needs a boost. And I would like to take the analogy of the 1921 um, uh, agreement which was signed, the 1921 uh, uh, alliance agreement. Um, we, we need a new alliance agreement between Turkey and Afghanistan maybe post use withdrawal and call it a new alliance agreement with a more expanded role for Turkey in Afghanistan, as well as Afghanistan's um, uh, you know, uh, bilateral uh, relationship, whether that uh, uh, union uh, or, or alliance agreement would uh, require uh, to expand bilateral relationship or um, in other formats, in multilateral formats under the NATO's agree framework or UN framework, or the OIC framework or other frameworks that exist. Now, uh, Turkey, as the law, as one of the most important, you know, Muslim country, uh, uh, one of the most important um, Islamic countries in the world, and one of the most powerful countries, have an important role to play in the Afghan peace process. Uh, we believe uh, many of us who have been inside the government, and as well as outside of the government, 
we believe that um, uh, Turkey can now play an, an innovative and important role in the Afghan peace process. This is a, an important opportunity for the Afghan peace process. And um, uh, Turkey can serve, uh, I think the time has come where a third party is required um, uh, and Turkey is best suited to serve as a mediator as well as a facilitator of the Afghan peace process, uh, specifically the intra-Afghan dialogue. And we do see a, a, a very important role um, in, in, in that regard for Turkey. Now, um, uh, Turkey also is a member of NATO, a Muslim country, a member of NATO, and they could also facilitate that um, uh, within the alliance in there. Uh, as, and Turkey would also, because of its history, has a historical relationship with various Afghan groups. And they can play an important role in terms of conflict resolution uh, as a third party uh, a mediator uh, within the Af inter Afghan negotiations uh, when it comes to that. Now, how do I see uh, the future relationship within this new alliance agreement that I, that I see? I think, um, given uh, Turkey's unique role uh, and history with Afghanistan, as well as uh, Turkey's growing role in the world and in the region <clears throat> and its growing economy under the leadership of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, um, Turkey can uh, redefine its relationship <clears throat> with um, Afghanistan and come and define a new, um, um, a, a new alliance agreement with Afghanistan, or some people could call it a new strategic uh, alliance between Turkey and Afghanistan. Um, so therefore, um, th that uh, it could have four pillars. W the first pillar could be a Turkish um, um, uh, political um, political uh, relationship um, um, with Afghanistan. I think the first pillar uh, Turkey could play under the political um, uh, within the Afghan peace process an important role, and um, that role. Uh, could be in the form of a mediator, uh, as well as in the form of um, a, a third party verifier as, or, or even facilitator uh, at this stage of the intra Afghan negotiations. The second pillar would be defense and security cooperation post US withdrawal. Um, Turkey is a unique country within NATO as a member state that could uh, train Afghan forces, continue training Afghan forces, um, uh, 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 officers, uh, uh, and as well as help with the integration uh, of uh, Taliban fighting missionary, for example, within the Afghan security forces through a professionalization process, as well as train Afghan, continue training Afghan police and other forces in uh, Turkish military schools. Um, but also take part, um, given uh, the relationship uh, that it has with the United States, as well as with other NATO countries, um, in, in city uh, counterterrorism um, uh, uh, field. And that could be, of course, um, defined. The third pillar of this new alliance agreement that I see is a regional consensus building. Turkey has been doing a lot of that uh, for under various frameworks, whether it's the Istanbul process, Art of Asia, or RECA, or other mechanisms which exist there. But Turkey could redefine a specific regional consensus building role for itself within this new evolved bilateral or multilateral relationship um, um, uh, uh, within, uh, for the, specifically for the Afghan peace process, given its historic and deep ties with Pakistan, you know, with the Central Asian countries and others, Turkey could play an important role there. And finally, the cultural and educational front. We have a lot of common, um, you know, uh, things when it comes to that. And as Deputy Foreign Minister and other speakers mentioned, many Afghans studied, um, uh, are studying, 4,000 of them in Turkey, uh, we have a, a Turkic community in Afghanistan, as well as um, other shared cultural uh, uh, relationships that we have. So with that, I conclude uh, uh, my remarks. And let me thank you again for having me. And I hope that we elevate this relationship to a new level, deeper, and much more 
important uh, for the good of the for both of our countries, for the good of the region, and for the good of the world. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tamim Ase, for your uh, presentation. Uh, I hope that all these uh, prospective expectations will come true for the, uh, both countries, and Turkey can contribute greatly to the uh, reconstruction of uh, the Afghan uh, institutions uh, and uh, will let the, to the uh, peace and prosperity and political stability of the state. Now, uh, I want to give the floor to our second presenter, uh, who is Professor Mustafa Yildran, uh, a faculty member of Akdeniz University. He will analyze bilateral economic relations between Turkey and Afghanistan. Uh, you know, uh, we know that ideological or emotional uh, affinity is, uh, has been dominating bilateral uh, relations, but still we have to focus on other dimensions of this bilateral relationship. Uh, and economy plays a, a great uh, role in, in this context. And uh, I want to give the, uh, the floor to Professor Yildran. The floor is yours. Uh... Thank you, my chairman. Uh, I would like to greet you all with my respect and good wishes, especially set organization. Today, we are here to talk about more than a century of Turkish-Afghan relation. But I think Turkish-Afghan relation are the story of two broader nations more than a thousand years. So I will talk about economic relations to broader country, Turkey and Afghanistan. In, fa in fact, Turkish-Afghanistan economic relations are based on historical roots because Afghanistan has always been most important country in the heart of Asia due to to the historical Silk Route. Turkey is trying to reach Southern and Eastern Asia through Afghanistan. Turkey is also going to play a role in Afghanistan contact with the Western world. In my opinion, the economic relations between Turkey and Afghanistan have undergone four stages so far. In the first stage, Turkey has become a role model for Afghanistan in the modernization and westernization process. In the first stage, it was aimed to create the infrastructure of a modern state for both countries. In 1920, the Afghan king, began a decade long process of reform, just like the founder of Turkish Republic, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, in Turkey. Turkey provides Afghanistan with military and technical training, as well as supplying educational programs. As it is now, the Treaty of Sadabad was signed among Turkey, Afghanistan, Iran, and Iraq in 1937. In the second stage, the economic relation between these two countries remain fairly inactive from 1940 to 1990. Turkey's interest in Afghanistan and Central Asia decreased, especially in the period of Second World War and post war period. In this third stage, to two countries got closer after the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. After this period, Turkish-Afghan economic relations continued and even increased, leading to further political relations. However, some economic relations such as uh, bilateral trade and foreign investment did not adequately develop between two countries. After many years, economic relations between two uh, countries constantly progressed with the leadership of Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, also Afghanistan President Eshef Ghani put more efforts in order to improve the economic relation. My speech is going to focus 
mainly on the develop, developments of trade, investment, aid policy, and how to continue future economic strategies between the two countries. Unfortunately, trade relation, relations between two countries are defined as one-sided, while export from Afghanistan to Turkey can reach up to $30 million. Afghanistan can export from Turkey for up to $150 million US dollar. In addition, Turkey's export to Afghanistan constantly decreased from 2012 to 2020. The good thing for Afghanistan is that its import, import export to Turkey increased in this period. Compared to 2010, Afghanistan export increased four times in 2020. However, trade volume between two countries did not rise, but become narrow, narrow partly. Although Turkey's export to Afghanistan was between $150 million and $200 million. While Turkey's exporting goods mainly consist of manufactured products such as consumer goods, metal products, and machinery, etc., Afghanistan export unprocessed products such as vegetables, raw materials, animals, leather, etc., to Turkey. In 2005, a bilateral investment treaty was signed between the two countries, and after this, all investment relations got stronger. Turkey has increasingly invested in areas such as agriculture, mining, and energy in Afghanistan from 2003 to 2016. 127 Turkish companies invested and worked mostly in construction in Afghanistan on 627 projects worth about $6 billion. Turkish firms are the biggest foreign investor in health services, energy, and mining. Turkey has contributed to socio-economic development of Afghanistan with foreign aid and foreign aid via Turkish International Cooperation and Development Agency, uh, shortly TICA. In recent years, Turkish International Cooperation and Development Agency has completed almost 200 projects. Under the direction of Turkey's Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Turkish International Cooperation and Development Agency supported almost 30 million US dollars for the development and capacity enhancement. As it is not the key point for India, Russia, China, the Middle East, and Europe for 2,000 years. Therefore, the most important development area for Afghanistan should focus on integration with the global logistic network. If Afghanistan can sustain political stability, it will trigger an economic development and a global connection. In addition, since 1995, the Regional Economic Cooperation Conference on Afghanistan has met seven times in several venues acting as a regional platform to coordinate contributions to the economic development of Afghanistan. One result of, uh, one result of these organization activities uh, was the establish, establishment of Ashgabat meeting, which created Lapis Lazuli Corridor, uh, other name Lajivat Road, composed uh, of railroad lines, highway, highways, and ferry services from Afghanistan, crossing Caspian Sea to Baku and continue on to TPC, with one route branching off to Poti, Georgia, on the Black Sea, and the other proceeding through Batumi, Georgia, 
on to Ankara and finally to Istanbul. The first shipment of imported goods arrived in Herat province through the Lapis Lazuli corridor in February 2019. The convoy took Af Afghan goods to Turkey via the new transit route in December 2018 and returned home with imported goods. This corridor will be the most important factor in the opening landlocked Central Asia to Europe. The route service trucks in international trade right now. Turkey has provided great diplomatic and economic contribution to the development of the corridor. Also, Turkey will reach Central and Southern Asia by this way. This will also help Turkey develop new strategies and take a part in rising Asian economies. With the rise of China in the global economy, a new economic competition environment is emerging. Just as in the 19th century, the rivalry between Britain and Russia restaurant the balance of economic power in Central Asia, the rise of China will create a new competitive environment. This economic and political competition are defined as new great game. In the light of Afghanistan, Turkey's history of coexistence in recent times, the countries have to cooperate more to ensure economic development against the new great game. Finally, I believe that two countries should prepare in the long term strategic economic plan uh, in order to overcome some future difficulties. Thank you very much for listening. Please do not hesitate to ask your question. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mustafa Hocam, uh, for your detailed uh, presentation. Uh, now, uh, I want to give the floor to uh, uh, Professor Suheyla Mubariz Qadri, uh, who is uh, a faculty member of the Faculty of Social Sciences at Kabul University. She will focus on the current status of bilateral relations between Turkey and Afghanistan. The floor is yours, uh, Ms. Khadri. Hello and good morning, uh, good afternoon, dears. Uh, this is my pleasure and honor to be uh, a part of this panel. And uh, let me to thank the host for adding me uh, all the highlights about the historical uh, relationships between Afghanistan and Turkey is uh, pointed by the ESRs. I just wanted to uh, add uh, some few points. Uh, the first one that is uh, very important for me in the history, uh, Turkey was the second country in 1919 that um, recognized Afghanistan's independence. And that was the beginning of the relationships between uh, uh, Afghanistan and Turkey. And also, um, they assigned uh, an agreement in uh, 1921 between uh, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, uh, the Turkish leader, and also uh, our king, Aman Khan. That was the beginning of a very, um, a very uh, important uh, political event in Afghanistan. And after that, in a century, we are uh, in a close relationship in a good and a friendship uh, relation with Turkey, with our um, um, Muslim uh, brother and sister country. And uh, let me to point one thing that is very important for me that Turkey was the first country that our modernized king, Amon Khan, sent many girls uh, for a scholarship in the year that many radical people in here protested against that. But, was, but that was the first stage of uh, their uh, relations in um, education uh, relations. And also after that, uh, many teachers were invited to Afghanistan to teach and train the military forces and also uh, in many other schools 
uh, they had teachers like that. Even now, we have a faculty at Kabul University, the faculty of uh, Turkish literature that my sister is a student there. And uh, I'm so proud of that faculty with uh, those unique teachers, even from Turkey, that uh, they are teaching there. And uh, in political and uh, in political parts, we have many relations with uh, Turkey. And uh, the most important uh, for me as an academia is the educational relationship between Turkey and Afghanistan, because um, Turkey is one of the modernized uh, rule models for Afghanistan that our new built uh, schools, universities were copied from uh, Turkey. And since then, we have uh, some unique and some good universities that were built upon the, um, by copying the Turkish uh, system, educational system. And uh, with Turkey, we have a very common and shared culture uh, that uh, really focuses uh, the, that takes the focus of many people because uh, after in 19 uh, in Amanullah Khan's uh, kingdom there were some radicals against him against the uh, his thoughts but this was the um, uh, Turkey as a Muslim country that reduces that uh, thoughts and that uh, ideas but um, Turkey is a very good um, an effective uh, country, and Turkey can be a very good, uh, effective country in the uh, peace process of Afghanistan because uh, Turkey is the only um, Islam, maybe Muslim member of the NATO that uh, influences uh, the decisions and also influences many other situations in Afghanistan. Uh, what I am very optimist about and what I am very hopeful about, about is the Turkey rule, uh, the Turkish uh, women rule in Afghanistan as a role model for other Afghan women because um, nowadays the peace process is going on, that these dialogues are taking time and uh, the only worry, the only concern that Afghan people have is uh, the rule of women after the peace process or after the joint uh, based uh, maybe regime after Taliban in Afghanistan. So Turkey uh, can be a very good and crucial uh, role model, a very key role model in Afghanistan again after the peace uh, process because the um, every country needs a role model uh, to go and to step uh, to their step. So I think Turkey can be a very good role model for Afghanistan to copy the system that they have, the women that they are working very peacefully in a very uh, democratic uh, environment. And uh, it can, um, Turkey can be also, uh, as the professor said, in the economic uh, based relations. And uh, I'm very uh, optimist about these relation, relations uh, after this century and uh, I'm so sure that uh, we will have a very good uh, future also because they, uh, we have a joint and shared history, culture, religion and that are, are what can make us together, can bring us together and we can have a very good future mm, and I can see a very uh, bright uh, relationship with Turkey in the future too. Uh, and uh, in the peace process, Turkey as a Muslim country, as a powerful Muslim country that locate, locates in Asia, also can uh, have a good position because uh, it influences many other Islamic countries like our, our neighbors, Pakistan. Uh, as in uh, 2007, uh, there was a meeting between Afghanistan, Pakistan and Turkey and uh, I think uh, the politicians even can copy that now because uh, Turkey has a very good relationship with Pakistan too, so that uh, can affect Afghanistan and can facilitate the peace process uh, in the country. We have many shared uh, scholars too, for example, uh, Maulana Jalaluddin Balkhi, uh, and uh, also other scholars that they were uh, born in Af uh, they were born in Afghanistan, but uh, they lived in Turkey and uh, they uh, based upon uh, 
multiculturalism, the pan turkism or the modernization in Turkey, and that all can uh, be used again uh, for a very peaceful and brotherhood uh, and sisterhood relationship with uh, Turkey. And let me thank you again for this uh, unique host uh, panel, and uh, I'm very thankful of everyone. Thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Suheyla Mubariz Qadri, uh, for your insightful presentation. Now I want to give the floor to our last uh, presenter, uh, Dr. Murat Aslan, uh, who is a researcher at SETA Foundation. At the same time, he is a faculty member of the of Hasan Kalyuncu University uh, in Gaziantep, Turkey. Uh, Dr. Aslan's uh, presentation will evaluate the security relationship between Turkey and Afghanistan. Uh, he will question how Turkey can contribute to the security sector in Afghanistan. The floor is yours, Dr. Aslan. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you. It's really an honor for me to present my ideas in here because, you know, I have been stationed in Afghanistan twice and, uh, you know, I had a chance to discover my roots over there uh, because when I asked my grandfather and uh, also the, my father-in-law, that means father of my wife, from uh, where uh, they had immigrated or came from, the general answer was Konya City. And I delved more and I have identified that my roots actually immigrated from Afghanistan, Central Asia and Afghanistan. That's that's why, you know, I'm a bit thrilled in here. Uh, so uh, stationed he being stationed in Afghanistan is a kind of chance to observe exactly uh, what my or, or how my culture was formed up. Because if you go through the overall history, social structure, cultural stance, the words, the, you know, the way that they have act, you know, it's almost similar with the Turks almost, uh, maybe completely. So I can easily claim this argument because I have a compare, uh, you know, chance to compare it. Uh, as you, Burhanettin Duran, Professor Duran, and the other guests underlined, uh, delineated exactly the relation of both. I think we mostly focus on uh, the latest century, mainly the years after 1918, because it's really significant that uh, these two countries were somehow uh, had a major concern for themselves. It was the recognition. Because Ottoman uh, Turkey over, of then uh, was partitioned by Great Britain and France by Cyprus Pico Agreement of 1916, and there was an independence war. On the other hand, uh, Amanullah Khan had uh, achieved a success, a victory against Great Britain. In 1918, and the only condition that was imposed by Great Britain was, uh, you know, uh, to have an Afghanistan not that uh, in independent because of the constraints on foreign policy implementation and some defense issues. So the delegations of both that were sent to uh, Soviet Union uh, was in a search to uh, find a state to enjoy a recognition. And they met and they first agreed on recognizing each other. And Afghanistan is the first country who uh, recognized uh, the new Turkey just before the declaration of the republic as an independent state. That's very important. And uh, for Afghanistan, vice versa, the same thing. Okay, if you go through the history, uh, Atatürk received a le letter from Amanullah Khan in 1920. Sorry, 1921. And he responded to, uh, to this letter in May 19, 1921. It's symbolic because at this day in 1919, Atatürk had stepped up to Samsung. And he pledged support to Afghan friends of them. And uh, sent officers, teachers, professors, uh, and Turkey just started an overall program uh, in Kabul. For instance, built the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Medicine, uh, educated students over there, 
trained uh, military units and reformed it, reformed the army. So it was a good start. And think that just in accordance with these activities, Turkey had an independence war just before the Sakarya uh, defense in 1922. So it's really significant. It's really significant. Another issue is the visit of Menderes in 1950s to Afghanistan. Think that in 1950s, Menderes visited directly Afghanistan and had stepped up to Kabul. And there was a great celebration. People had gathered all along the roads from two sides and cheered. That's important because if people gather like this, that means there's a perception of, uh, you know, just uh, celebrating something. It's really an important event for the public because the public attitude is really important to assess such uh, undertakings. Okay, then we, we see a slowdown because uh, Soviet incursions were really a challenge in the relations of not between only, you know, Afghanistan and Turkey and also the other states. But 9-11 and afterwards are important to delineate because right after that, we see a different term in Afghanistan that Turkey had uh, involved heavily to all fields in Afghanistan along with NATO and also sometimes individually by herself. Uh, I think there are some issues that must be underlined here. The first issue is that uh, I was uh, over there in 2005 and 2012 and think that Afghanistan was a bit different uh, from the other conflicts because there was already a traditional state perception in Afghan mentality and, you know, it was good to start. So it was not ground zero in Afghanistan to uh, mobilize a state building effort. That was really important to underline. Another issue is about the infrastructure. Okay, we have to confess that infrastructure and services were lacking in Afghanistan. That means people had suffered from the long-lasting conflicts, maybe more than for 40 years, and now uh, had a quest, a uh, keenness to reach this service. And uh, millions were uh, expelled or just forced to leave country either to Pakistan or Iran. And that was another issue. And they were, they were tending to coming back to their countries and think that there was an humanitarian tragedy just because of the uh, returns. Okay. Uh, what Turkey did as far as this situation was perceived as a matter of defining problem. Turkey was for sure a member of NATO and assumed responsibilities directly first, command and control the NATO units in Kabul. Uh, the second, coordinate with other countries in terms of uh, healing the infrastructure, especially for the humanitarian assistance at the very first instances. And later then, started uh, national projects over there. Santika, for instance. Okay, these are really relevant to the securitization of country. Because we mostly perceive security as a sole activity that uh, is supposed to be established by security forces, but it is not. Security is more wider than perceived. For instance, if you go to the streets of Kabul or Balkh or any other state like Pakdia, for instance, I think security of human is really a matter of concern in the minds of the Afghans. On the other hand, security of social groups, doesn't matter how they would define themselves, is a matter of another perception in Afghan mind. Security of everything, because they want to reach all civilized, all uh, necessary uh, services. That means if you want to take the securitization in Afghanistan, you should take military just one option other than the other uh, need to do assets. Well, if you just try to classify uh, what had to be done and what was done, 
I think we can also project what must be done afterwards, as uh, His Excellency Tamim Asay underlined, along with uh, Professor Suheila. Because what was achieved or what was started was first state building effort. Because Afghanistan was lacking institutionalization. That was the issue. Lacking services. No, you know, water, uh, just trying to develop the, you know, wells. Well, it's good though, not enough. Another issue, peace and reconciliation. And I think there was great efforts of all, you know, Afghan leaderships along with the U.S. or Turkey or others, but we could not achieve up until now, but we needed. Another issue is development and administrative capacity building. Development is uh, heavily affiliated with economic capacity of a country. Once you have resources, that means you can achieve it. And I believe that Afghanistan has resources if properly processed. And administrative capacity building, uh, there, were, there were efforts of that, and still Afghanistan needs to improve this capacity building efforts to promote the prosperity and also administrative uh, potential, realizing the potential of administrative capacity. On the other hand, on the other hand, uh, I think we should also focus on what was achieved on the ground that is visible in the eyes of Afghans. You know, I had uh, discussed some uh, issues with the Afghan uh, friends. Mainly, my common question was, what do you think about? And the answers were really interesting sometimes. Uh, one of my Afghan friends told me something that needs to be, you know, underlined now. He said, okay, if you go to the uh, base of any major country in Kabul, okay, they will first direct a rifle. And once they warn you, that means you should stop. But if you are uh, approaching to a Turkish base, uh, they open the gate and take you to the hospital with free access. And if you ask why such an attitude was preferred by Turkish soldiers over there, I think it was because there was no differentiation in terms of the societies of both countries. If you are there to help them, no need to stop at the gates. So it was very interesting for me. So finally, finally, what must be done afterwards? I think it's more important than what was achieved or processed. The first issue, I think Turkey may contribute to reconciliation process better than any other actor. Turkey, as a Muslim country, is credible in the eyes, in the eyes of Afghans and also all neighboring countries. That means Yes, Turkey may do it, reconciliation, and also mediation with the neighbors like Pakistan. It may be an agenda, and with, there were attempts, you know, to have an, a kind of environment to build it. Second thing, Turkey may totally be committed to an overall, but previously designed and programmed state-building efforts together with Afghans. There are some cases that you don't have to invest much in terms of finance. But just start something, build a system. And Turkey has know-how for that and may contribute to institutionalization of Afghanistan if Afghans desire it. Another one is about defense. Well, I do not only mean sending soldiers and having Afghan soldiers and police be trained in the fields, but I'm talking about building a capacity in defense sector. Afghanistan needs it if you are dependent on importing something from another country, that means you are totally loyal what they desire. And finally, communications. We need public-to-public -public communications. We need communications of all kinds. That means uh, publics of both countries will and uh, can understand each other, and they are just like two hands holding together. So that's that's that, these are my proposals actually. I thank you a lot for your opportunity. 
Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Aslan, uh, for your presentation. Uh, now we came to the end of our presentations. We have several questions directed to different uh, speakers. Now uh, I want to uh, read the questions and direct them to the related speakers. The first question is directed to uh, uh, His Excellency, Mr. Uh, Asay. Uh, Mr. Rafi Refik asked the question. Uh, do you think Turkey's support in Afghanistan peace process will accelerate the peace negotiations than its current pace? The floor is yours, Mr. Ate. Well, thank you very much uh, for that question. Um, Turkey is uniquely positioned and has, I think, three, four comparative advantages that other countries uh, don't have, and Turkey's involvement in the Afghan peace process uh, can elevate and expedite, as well as um, help um, uh, the Afghan peace process to come to a successful conclusion. Now, those four uh, particular comparative advantages uh, that Turkey has, the first one, it has, it is a, one of the, you know, most powerful uh, Islamic countries in the Islamic world. Uh, and uh, it has an important role to play in uh, OIC, um, in other platforms. So um, it, it can help forge uh, consensus on peace as well as some leverages, uh, uh, other leverages uh, within the uh, Islamic world. That's one. Secondly, um, it is a NATO, it's the only NATO member state, Islamic member state. And within the alliance, Turkey is uniquely positioned to um, advocate um, uh, and as well as maybe um, um, uh, carry on the torch uh, in a redefined mission. Uh, of NATO uh, once the U.S. withdraws. Uh, and we have heard it consistently from, um, you know, um, Turkish officials uh, all the way to President Erdogan, uh, His Excellency President Erdogan, about we will not leave until the Afghans say thank you very much, it's now enough, and we, we are now at our own feet and we will leave. So Turkey probably will have to reconfigure and, and see how post-NATO as a NATO member state, could carry on that torch. And I think that would be an interesting mission uh, to have. Um, and, and Turkish soldiers, um, and Dr. Aslan knows this, Turkish military here in Afghanistan are very well respected, both by the Taliban and the government and the people, uh, because they're Muslim, because they have unique capabilities and characteristics, because they know the culture, because a lot of people actually feel they're like Afghans, you know, um, themselves um, uh, in many ways similarities. The third uh, comparative advantage that Turkey has is, is historical relationships with various Afghan groups and it's a state to state relationship that it always had. Now, uh, Turkey can play an important role because in, in, in the facilitation of the inter Afghan dialogue, specifically um, uh, in, in northern and central Afghanistan. And, um, people who the Taliban actually consider their former foes. And uh, I don't see many countries having that kind of leverage, plus the leverage that uh, Turkey has um, uh, you know, uh, with other groups. And finally, it's the regional part. Turkey has a deep, close ties with Pakistan, as well as many Afghan neighbors, and can play a very important role um, in forging that regional consensus with the right instruments, right policy. And that's why I'm an advocate of an elevation of the Turkish-Afghan friendship and relationship, redefining it, elevating it, and making it uh, to meet the requirements of new Afghanistan. I mean, uh, we have a very strong history, but romanticizing history Well, I think it's frozen. Do right. for uh, the four. Okay, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. 
Now we have a, another question, uh, again asked by the same person. What will be the scenarios be in case of success or failure of peace negotiations? So what are your expectations? I want to direct this question to both of you. That is both Mr. Tanim Asay and Dr. Murat Aslan. Uh, Murat Aslan, please, you go mm -hmm. first. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay, peace negotiation means both parties agree on compromising. That means if Afghan government says, let's have a peace and uh, Taliban or any other opposing faction, because there are many, not only Taliban, uh, that means we don't have any result. If both parties or all parties does have an intention to end a conflict and start building their own country for the benefit of the Afghan public, because they are in deep need of enjoying civilized needs and the one who provides it will be credible in a long term period then why not and uh, you know his excellency essay uh, provided the advantages and also why turkey may be included to this reconciliation process well there are many factors but i think uh, the major issue for turkey is to facilitate each other, communicate in a proper way with no agenda. That's important. Because Turkey currently is in Afghanistan not to realize an interest. I mean, Turkey is not in Afghanistan not to make a money, not to make you know profit uh, from a financial resource, not to have or extract anything from Afghanistan to the West or East or somewhere else. But it's really an honest and, uh, you know, impartial actor over there. And as His Excellency underlines, Taliban is also well aware of it. I think the issue in here, first, there must be a system to be identified and announced. Because what Afghan people need is first to enjoy exactly what a regular citizen in Turkey, in Netherlands, in the UK, and in the USA enjoys. That's it. If they impede it, then, okay, never ends. That, that, that's the magic. So, uh, if there's a failure, unfortunately, there will be an ongoing conflict uh, up until one claims victory, but there will be no victory but only the losses of lives, of Afghan lives, you know. And I think that's not the one. Uh, both parties do not want it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now, do you want to say something uh, regarding this question, Mr. Tamim Asay? Well, yes, just quickly. Uh, Afghans have no choice but to make peace. Uh, Taliban is a reality. The new Afghanistan is also a reality. The new generation, people like me and others who are very young and been through, you know, the new Afghanistan. The two realities have to come together and learn from history and live in compromise and live uh, in peace and harmony. If they don't do that, I see three scenarios emerging. First, if Taliban go for monopoly of power in a multi-ethnic country, monopoly of power in, in a country like Afghanistan, history shows, will never work. Uh, so it will go to civil war. And God forbid, um, um, you know, we will turn into another Syria and Libya. And, and this is what I continuously tell people, uh, don't go for that. It's a multi-ethnic country, it's a multi-centered country, there are different centers of power, and you have to live. The second scenario is, uh, invest on in the peace process and we everybody prays hopes but at the same time works hard that this peace process succeeds uh, at least all the groups should have learned you know in the last three decades that war is not the answer conflict is not the solution and the third scenario is i think status quo uh, what you see is biden deciding to continue and having some sort of a presence uh, president biden as an administration until we until the conditions are right and taliban evolve into a you know, political force, and then a peace is made between the Afghans. Okay, thank you very much. We have a kind of uh, additional question to this one. Uh, Mr. Tamim, I say you have just mentioned that 
you know, the war is not a solution and Taliban is uh, one of the realities of the country. We have a question from uh, Abdul Karim Naim. Uh, he asks, after having an agreement with Taliban, how the Afghan government can be sure that Taliban will not break their promise? Uh, can you elaborate on this one as well, please? Well, um, that is why I see the need for countries, for third party countries like Turkey, specifically Turkey. Um, because the two parties to conflict will never agree. Um, well, they will always pinpoint blame. And you need a third party country who is also a mem NATO member state, has influence in OIC, knows the country, has a very beautiful historical relationship with the country. He played a mediator, facilitator, verifier role. Um, I think uh, if we leave it to the conflict parties, uh, they will keep blaming each other. And, and I think uh, you need a third party verification as well as facilitation and mediation mechanism. And I see Turkey to be the best and, and perfect, you know, example of that. Um, um, and Turkey can play a very, very important role there. Uh, thank you, Dr. Aslan. Uh, do you want to add something uh, to this question? Well, uh, thank you. I think the issue in here is, you know, as I said, creating a system. You know, if any uh, party breaks the promise, I think there must be uh, something as a burden. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, uh, they will be free in acting. On the other hand, uh, we should just remember one thing. Uh, what is the original purpose of Taliban and what the ultimate goal is? If you don't answer this question, that means there will be no uh, reconciliation. If it's about deporting the foreign military presence from Afghanistan, I think reconciliation is the precondition for having the foreign soldiers to be out of Afghanistan. If it's about uh, having the authority uh, as they did before, well, they may have it, but they will lose it. Because as uh, His Excellency Asay argues, uh, what I know is that there are 32 languages being spoken in Afghanistan. So how can you just inject a certain sect, a certain, uh, you know, uh, ethnicity or any other organization to rule all the country, to reign all Afghans? There must be a least level of compromise that all segments of society could tolerate it. Otherwise, uh, they will just be uh, they, they will just have the authority for a temporary time and fight again. So, if Taliban uh, feels that they may uh, have the power, so why not to go elections? Uh, propose, you know, uh, candidates and just request the votes of the Afghan public. If you are to serve Afghan public, then don't hesitate, just go. At least you will have some seats in the parliament and reflect what your opinion is. And that's, that must be the issue to be achieved. And believe in me, uh, in Afghanistan, okay, that there are people still living in camps. This, this is reality. So how can you justify the burden of this life with a certain ideology? Even the cause, ultimate goal, doesn't matter. By what? They are hungry. They are trying to make a small amount of money by just, uh, you know, dedicating their lives all day. And they experience every day. Uh, and still Afghanistan has kids in the in these camps since uh, you know there are there are baby, uh, babies uh, frozen just because of the gold uh, cold so what does that mean is there any justification for fight I don't think so so I think reconciliation is essential first to realize the ultimate goals of not only the Afghan government but also the Taliban or other segments of opposing factions. Second thing, they must have a self-reliance to go before public for a popular vote. And by that way, they can say, okay, I'm representing. 
But now they are, they are representing whom? The ones who carry weapons. But we don't need it. We need the representation in the eyes of public. That's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your answer. Now, uh, we don't have uh, any other questions. So uh, if you want, you can uh, just make your concluding remarks, each of you, uh, if you have any. Uh, let's start with uh, uh, Professor Mustafa Yildran. Uh, I will turn to you for your concluding remarks. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I addition to uh, a question. What should be strategic economic political for Afghanistan? Uh, there are four strategic economic issues. One, job creation. Two, to provision of basic services. Three, the construction of infrastructure for the development of fiscal sustainability for Afghanistan. All uh, issues, uh, uh, if, if Afghanistan uh, sustain uh, political stability, economy, uh, economy most powerful and stability uh, for Afghan uh, people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Murat Aslan, your concluding remarks. Okay, I think uh, we, we were very clear. I thank you all the participants uh, because it's really uh, difficult to have experts uh, to, you know, together in a, in a same platform from Afghanistan and Turkey. And I thank uh, uh, Excellency Asay and also Professor Suheyla. Uh, and it was a good opportunity for me to express me because we really want Afghans to live in prosperity, in stability, and in peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, uh, Mr. Atey, for your concluding remarks. Well, let me also thank you, thank Sita, thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, for this opportunity. This was a great discussion. Let me also thank the great nation of Turkey for their friendship, for their assistance. Uh, we, we cherish that. And I believe let's translate and elevate history, um, good history, into good new heights of a strategic relationship. And I also believe uh, it, it's a historic opportunity for Turkey to play a mediator role in the Afghan peace process as well as a facilitator. It's a perfect time. Turkey should do it, and Turkey is very well fitted to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we have a, a, an internet connection problem uh, for Suheyla, uh, Professor Suheyla. Uh, so she is unable to connect to the uh, program for now. Well, we came to the end of our program. I thank all the speakers for their uh, in, insightful presentations. And personally, I also believe that Turkey and Afghanistan uh, need to diversify their relationship and to focus on different dimensions uh, to build a sustainable win-win -win relationship, which will maximize their niche, uh, national interest. Uh, I hope that Turkey will find a, a, an opportunity to contribute more to the rebuilding uh, of the state institutions uh, to, to the reconstruction uh, uh, of uh, services uh, in the state, to political stabilization and economic welfare of the state. Uh, and I hope that this close affinity between the two countries will continue to deepen in future through a common stance in political issues. Uh, and uh, I, at the end, uh, let's say long live the 100th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Turkey and Afghanistan, and long live the Turkish Afghan brotherhood and friendship. Thank you very much for listening to uh, a SETA web panel. Have a nice day.